Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Today y Manana. I'm Alex. This is Nick. We're very excited to have you joining us this morning. On, yeah, we, the, the smoke from the fires uh, has definitely reached Charlottesville this morning, so it's a smoky, yeah. it's a smoky morning here it's at Charlottesville. It's a perfect day so for definitely, it's a per- Well, it's a perfect day for, I was going to say a cafe con leche, but it's really also a perfect day for some Castle Hill cider, which is what we have in front of us. So I think, I, I, now that Naderio has made this amazing cocktail, which is sitting in front of us, which we'll talk about shortly, Cafe Ton Lecce isn't even on my mind anymore. As soon as I saw it, I'm like, this is what I want this morning. <laughs> yeah, right. So it's a perfect morning for that. We do, of course, our prayers are for all the people in Canada that are indeed suffering from the actual fires. Right. I mean, we've got the smoke, but they have the actual wildfires up there. So right. please keep them in your prayers that they help, uh, that those fires can be managed and lest not too many more people lose their homes or beautiful, beautiful land up there and, and trees. Yeah. So uh, be sure to keep them in your prayers. We have a great show lined up for you this morning at the end of the show of course it's going to be our giveaway niche it's says you actually have until charlottesville opera comes on so until you see caroline and brian in these seats between nick and i you still have an opportunity you have a chance you have a chance to win seven hundred dollars worth of giveaway prizes and literally all you have to do is go to the today money on instagram like the post like any of the giveaway posts really Follow the accounts listed and tag two friends. You don't actually even have to subscribe to like an email list where you're going to get a bunch of stuff, but you should Follow still go to castlehillsider.com and charlottesvilleopera. I believe it's charlottesvilleopera.com. Let me double check that. Charlottesvilleopera's website. You should go there. Dot org. Charlottesvilleopera.org. Dot org. You should still go to those Alex two websites and rusty. learn more. <laughs> I've been there. I was on honeymoon for two weeks, so yeah, you know, no, a little rusty. A bit rusty. You should still go to charlottesvilleopera.org and castlewilleopera.com to learn more about all the amazing events that we're going to be talking about today. So we're going to be joined very shortly by Josephine Carr, Director of Retail Operations at Castle Hill Cider, as well as Medario Venable, mixologist at the Bebedero, and later in the show by Carolyn Wara. Artistic Director at Charlottesville Opera and Brian Damaris, Conductor for Charlottesville Opera. So we have a great show lined up for you. Of course, we always love being here on the I Love Seville Network set. Some shout outs, a big thank you, of course, to being presented by Emergent Financial Services and powered by our good friends at Tassel Hill Cider, Charlottesville Opera, Matias Sion Realty, Credit Sirius Insurance, and Forward Adelante, the premier Latino networking group here in Charlottesville, Virginia. So we got it's a great show lined up today. I'm really excited uh, for it. Be sure to like and share. Send us any questions, comments. Johnny Ornelas, amigo del programa, already liking and sharing the show, saying keep up the good work. Johnny Ornelas, muchísimas gracias, mi amigo. He's a great guy. Of course, he's got uh, the, uh, he, he co-owns, um, you've got uh, huh, El Mariachi. El Mariachi. El Mariachi at Zion's Crossroads and the Guadalajara, Guadalajara that you can find on Fontaine. So, be sure to check those out. He's a great, uh, great friend of the program. So we got this is going to be and, a fantastic one. Uh, and I was going to say also good morning to Cardo Cruz Duran, who says excited for the show. Uh, oh, how could you not be? Yeah, we're all excited. How we are all, all right. excited for today's show. So I, I don't know, but you, I'm ready to jump um, yes, I'm right in for today. Ready, yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. So we're, we're excited to welcome to the show this morning Josephine Tarr. She is the Director of Retail Operations for Castle Hill Cider and Medario da Sanerio, venerable mixologist at the Bebedero. Josephine Medario, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Hello. We are, we are happy. We are really excited to have you both here to talk some, some of our favorite things, so, which is, you know, Castle Hill 231 Fest, the Bebedero. So first off, I mean... Josephine, I'm going to have you tell, you've been on before, so I'm going to have you tell us a little bit about maybe the origin of 231 Fest. Absolutely. We'll talk about it, and then yeah. Daria, I'll have you introduce yourself and say maybe how you first got interested in mixology, so you can decide who wants to go I first. I start. Yeah. I'm um, actually funny that you said El Mariachi, because like a few weeks ago, we like ran into each other in a parking lot at El Mariachi. Oh. I was like, is that you? <laughs> um, yeah, so my name is Josephine. I'm a director of retail operations at Castle Cider. I do all things fun. Um, and not so fun, but you know. Um, but the 231 Fest, absolutely fun. Um, we came up with last year, 231 is Route 231, mm-hmm. um, which is about 20 minutes outside of Charlottesville. And we really wanted to create a festival that highlighted our area of town and showed mm-hmm. all that we had to offer. Um, but we also wanted to have a philanthropic aspect of it. So we partnered with the Blue Ridge Food Bank and made that our benefactor. Um, and last year, we were able to provide 68,000 meals. So wow. what the 231 Fest is, it's all about community. It's 
it's kid friendly. It's dog friendly as long as you keep them on leash. Talking about the dogs, um, <laughs> but um, we have craft beverage vendors. So when you buy a ticket, that includes complimentary tasting from all of our craft beverage partners. Wow. So you have beer, you have wine, you have cider. Currently, um, we actually have some honey tastings as well from Thistle Rock oh, Eatery. That's, cool. that's com- up and coming as well, and that's awesome. Um, we have a whole entire shopping experience with non-alcoholic vendors. I'm talking jewelers, chocolatiers. Um, I mean, we have glass blowers. We have, I mean, there's just so much going on. And then we have live music from local bands. We have three different local bands. Um, we have six different food trucks. Um, and we have the SPCA there as well that, with dogs for adoption that day. Um, and we have a whole kids area for the kids as well. Um, and then we have a whole VIP area if, if you're a VIP ticket holder. And, and that's the quick synopsis. I mean, there's clearly a lot going on this so year. Yeah, we lot. have... Oh over 45 businesses participating with us in this festival. So it's very, very exciting. Um, if you buy one ticket to our festival as a general mission ticket, you provide 64 meals. If you buy one VIP ticket, uh, you provide 114 meals. That's amazing. That so incredible. you do good mm-hmm. and, and have you have a, a great yeah, time. Yeah, doing yeah. it. Is that tied into the price? Because I noticed that the VIP ticket isn't at $114. Yeah, so it's for it. every $1, it feeds four meals through the food bank. That's and so, so cool. we have our, our wonderful sponsors this year. We have a few of them, just to mention, I mean, a lot of them, just to mention a few, Allied Concrete, Bank of America, um, Malloy, um, Story House Real Estate. I could go on and on. There's so many. Marigold, John George. Um, when they give a sponsorship, a direct donation goes to the food bank immediately. So before we even start our ticket sales, we have wow. actually already matched last year's numbers, which is incredible. Oh, that's so cool. Um, awesome. But yeah, we're excited to feed more people. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and people don't realize that in June, which is obviously when the festival is, this Saturday from 12 to 6, um, it's actually one of the hungriest times in our area because kids are out of school and mm, people are very food insufficient. Yes. But it's the lowest time for donations because donations typically happen in Thanksgiving and Christmas, and, Christmas and on the right. holidays because that's when people are really thinking about others. But this is the time that they really need donations. So right. um, they partner with us and we partner with them because we were like, this is perfect then. Let's, awesome. let's uh, feed the community. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, you know, really do neat. good and have a great time. And I exactly. love the fact that you've already matched it. last year. Just oh man, before it's even started, that's that I'm, must feel awesome. So ex- yeah. yeah, it feels so so awesome. I mean, I'm hoping we break a um, hundred thousand meals this year. That would be really really cool. We're gonna that do it. We're gonna do it. We're, that's, <laughs> that's part of why we're on today, right? Yeah. Uh, Jane Carter Green, thanks for watching the show this morning. Love it. Love uh, everyone joining us. Ricky Goodwin Jr., thanks for watching this morning. So, Medadio, I mean, first time having you on, on board. Great Tell team. us a little bit about yourself, how you first got interested in mixology, how you got connected to, to 231 Fest. Um, I actually met Josephine at Marigold. Yeah. Working at Marigold. I made some cool cocktails for her, and she liked it, and we took off ever since. <laughs> yeah. Um, how I got into mixology, um, I always watched it on TV, and um, I had family members that was into the scene, mm-hmm. and I always grew up wanting to be, you know, a bartender and a trick bartender extraordinaire yep. and whatnot, and thus here I am now. I mean, he's being humble. When I say he puts on a show, it's not even funny. I mean, like, he spins and he's shaking all these things and things are on fire and there's bubbles. And I'm like, where am I? Like, I feel like I had to pay a ticket just to see him at the bar. I probably would pay a ticket just to see him at the bar. So we were building the VIP experience, which is awesome. You get an hour entry early to the festival. You get a swag bag that's full of merch valued way over $200. It's really awesome. Um, Marigold is, is curating the whole entire loft upstairs. They're doing a cocktail, a rosé pour, um, which are complimentary with your ticket, food grazing table, and a taste of their signature tuna tartare. But then we have an outdoor tent, and I immediately, right when this started, I came to him and I said, can Madario please put on a show at my festival? Uh-huh. Because he, he's just, not only is it a show, but he also connects with people really, really mm. well. And he really is like the true meaning behind like a story behind a drink or that yeah. bartender that you can, you know, he probably knows too much about my life. Um, <laughs> but he probably knows too much about everyone's life because he really brings that comfort and that yeah. fun aspect. Um, so yeah, yeah, we brought him on board and he was all about it, especially yeah. with the cause. 
and uh, we have him making cocktails in the outside tent area as well as doing his, you know, I call it a show because it really is an experience. It and is. then we have like Katie Faz uh, doing live glass blowing. So you, the outside VIP tent is more of like a show and an experience mm-hmm. and and Madaria is providing some of that stuff. Oh, which is, which yeah. is awesome. I mean, we have one of his amazing yeah, cocktails like, just to give you a little taste. And sh- and look. And should we all pull it out? Watch. Yeah, pull it I up I probably here. will spill I'm it. I'm showing <laughs> up okay, to the gonna, camera. Gonna, so, Mirario, as we, as we cheer, I'm going to do like a long distance. Yeah. Salud. 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 <laughs> um, as we taste this, tell us a little bit about this creation here. Okay. Um, so, to start off, the cider is um, a ginger <laughs> cider from Castle Hill. OG. OG. You like it? So oh, that's that's good. great. That is good. Um, I thought something light and refreshing, something fun also. Um, not too sweet, but something super fun. Thank you. Um, so the rim is actually ginger snap cookie crumbles with chocolate as well. Um, also use lychee nectar, which is super light, fun ingredient to use, especially in the summer, um, and lemon. So... Yeah. Yeah. It's no, a great combination. Yeah. It's so good. It's really that's good. so good. Nice little that's outdoor so martini ish. Yeah, that's a, that's amazing. It just shows you the versatility of what you can do with cider as well. For sure. You know, because I know there's going to be a couple cider based cocktails. Yeah, cocktails Castle Hill will have their own to. as well. So there'll be a lot of cider based cocktails. Oh, yeah. Which are always the most exciting to me because it's like some of them too are you'll taste them. I'm like. Does this have something else besides yeah. cider in it? Like, there's no way. It's interesting. But yeah, it's, yeah. it's like magic. It's amazing. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. That's magic. And the lychee just like balances, balances everything balances out. it out yeah, nicely. It mm. You know, it's, although the OG cider always I thought was fantastic because it's not, it's not quite your, it avoids the completely overwhelming like ginger beer thing where you taste, sometimes ginger beer you have it and like, my sinuses Filling get in. cleared out. I'll use it like instead of allergy medicine. It's like, yeah. There it but is. It's, memories start coming back to yeah. you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the Castle Hill OG cider is just like a, a nice touch yeah. of it without being too overwhelming. So it's just beautifully done. Now, I have a question for Medadio. What flavor? So obviously, when you were going through, did you have a choice of which Castle Hill you could use to make a. Um, yeah, she gave me a, um, a couple fun options to choose from, and I was just like, I mean, I feel like ginger would have been the least one to use, so I was like, let's try that one. So you're going for the challenge. Right? A little now, bit what of a challenge? Yeah. And, and what was what? I guess what flavor profiles like just jumped at you when you fly? Like, was it was it? I guess was it interesting for you a different experience given that it was cider. Not really. Um, I love the basis, uh, the ginger part. Um, was mm. interesting. I never had ginger cider before, so I thought it would be cool to like have fun with that, especially with lighter ingredients being mm-hmm. that it's summertime. Yeah. yeah. Lighting and refreshing, you know. He Beautiful tells me, mix. he goes, I'm the flavor master. And I'm like, okay. Like, so he, he, was like, he was yes. like, immediately when I had ginger, <coughs> I thought this and I thought that. And yeah, I was just like, this is why you are here. Right, no, perfect. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. it's amazing. But that's what you want, the flavor master. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. <laughs> it was a fun challenge, though. And yeah, he has I'm another f- cocktail, too, that he's going to have at his oh, booth, so, so. so that's a surprise yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah. many uh, options to look forward to you even get little surprises things yeah. that even we won't reveal here <laughs> on the show you just don't have to go you yeah. just have to, yeah. to, to find oh, there's that so out. many things that like i like i haven't even mentioned or like i'll probably forget to mention like there's free fly fishing classes in our pond no way you can fish our pond which we never allow um, we have a concrete touch truck for the kids that are coming so they can go see a cool... Th- There's so many That's little so things many that I'm like, so do. just show up and, and discover. Exactly, and, and, and enjoy. And feed people. <laughs> exactly, yeah. it, it's precisely. So, Madeira, well, it's so, nice that you're giving so much in, 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 yes. in response. That's like There's so many things going on at 2.30 moment. It's like an all day. You spend all day there. That's, that's our hope, yeah. That's yeah. the goal. <laughs> that's the goal. It is fun in Castle Oil. Yeah, it oh, is, amazing, you know, and, and it's always a beautiful spot to hang out at and, and see. And there's going to be a great energy, you know. And there's so many people come out, so it's always like fun. To and just, the food's great. And oh the food, yeah, like, that's, there's so really many. Good. There's lobster yeah. rolls, oysters, pizza, uh, twisted biscuit, which uh, so like biscuits. <coughs> we have barbecue, and we have a cake bar. Oh, 
Just sliced cake bars coming mm-hmm. back? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, man. man. Yeah, it's, it's, oh. We've had them on the show. They're good. Pepito's yeah. Simply Trending Catering Barbecue, Salty Bottom Blue Oysters. Oh, Pepito's. Okay. Yeah. They're part of oh. our giveaway as well. There you so. go. Yeah. Oh, that pizza. So if you win the giveaway, you They put on have... their own show, too. I mean, oh, they, they no, have, like, they the do. dumb boys out. Like, oh, they are they're so, great. I'm yeah. so excited to have them. Oh, it's, it, that's awesome. Clara Kasha, thank you so much for oh, uh, hey. loving the show this morning. <laughs> Clara, uh, Greer Kelly Ottenbach, liked in the show this morning. Thank you for, for watching Elizabeth Erpy with a Z, watching the show this morning. <laughs> Mrs. Elizabeth Erpy uh, watching the show. So thanks, uh, thanks you all for joining us. Um, so, Medeo, tell, tell us a little bit about, I'm curious, what's kind of, just, um, you, you strike me as a man who's also like, in addition to knowing probably all the classics, you you invent your own cocktails, your creative mind. What's kind of your approach, like when thinking of a new cocktail to work on? Like what what kind of how does it how does it even begin? Um, you know, I guess with modern day mixology, um, people do a lot of riffs off the old classics. Mm-hmm. So I try to do riffs off of riffs off the old classics, uh, and then base off of that. Yeah. So anything fun and funky that you haven't seen before and ingredients like super fruits like jackfruit and mm-hmm. things like that mm-hmm. I try to go in and try to include into the new cocktail so which is neat and it works beautifully yeah. it's, it's, you don't often it's always fun because you're saying okay here's something I've never tasted before but mixed in a way that might be slightly familiar to me right but it's been spiced up yeah it's also great working with chefs so you learn mm. different palettes and ingredients to use and things that pair well together and whatnot so oh that's that's awesome yeah that's fantastic so each of you gotta know from each of you what's one of the things it can be more than one i, I don't like to box people into one thing but what are some of the things you're most you're most looking forward to for 231 fest you know, I like to talk a lot. So I'm like, I'm like, oh, you can name as many as you want. That's why I hate, I hate boxing people after one thing. You Honestly, the, the thing I am most excited about is just to see the reaction from the community of how much we've grown just from one year. Mm. Um, and I just like, I like creating memories for people. That's why I like my job, you know? So I just am excited to see all the memories created there, all the people, you know, you meet new people at festivals and you're doing good. Like, I'm just excited to see people happy. That's kind of, that is my job. My job is to make people happy and to create experiences for people I agree. that contribute to their life. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I feel like that adds value. And again, like we're feeding people. It's we're really good, doing exactly. something good. So it's not only like from the customer interaction, but it's far beyond that to the rest of the community. And so that's honestly, even if it's corny, it's just really real for me. It's going to be very, very exciting. There's a lot of things to do. And I think... It's also cool that I think the demographic is really going to expand because we've really touched on something for everybody. Absolutely. What about you, Medeo? I agree. I piggyback off that. I just like the aspect of uh, everybody coming together, using their mm-hmm. talents and special abilities to come together, fun, and to feed over 100,000 Hopefully, yeah. People, yeah. hopefully. Oh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I mean, yeah. my friend joked, she was like, just go on the show and just say, you're a bad person if you don't buy a ticket. And I was like, I am not going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, she was like if it's so easy to feed people, people should just buy it. And I was like, that's my thought, but you can't say that. Yeah. <laughs> but Nick can say it for you. Yeah. Yeah, you're horrible if you don't buy it. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, but like, that's the point. Is like you want to create a positive experience in response to doing something great. Like yeah. it's, it's, it's feel good. It's very immersive. I mean, and I think that's part of what makes me jump out, especially about like a cocktail like this, is that it's very immersive. Like you just all the... So how do you decide when a cocktail is done? I'm sorry to go back to the cocktails, but like... Because I'm, I'm wondering, because you could have just like just called, I guess, called it done at, you know, lime juice and, and I just used, replaced it with castle cider and put the yeah. ginger around I feel like doing this a while, you just kind of know when it's finished, you know, okay. when it's like a start to finish and as far as, play, pr- excuse me, favorite mm-hmm. profile. So, you know, if something is missing, it kind of tells a story from as soon as you sip it to as soon as it's done. So mm-hmm. I feel like in each cocktail, at least what I make, it's like an adventure that or a trip. So from start to finish. So oh, I like that. Yeah. That makes sense. I said, yeah, someone does, I like and writing short aspect. stories. Yeah. Well, yeah. I like writing. Pretty much and in a cocktail. When you're when you're a writer, when you're telling a story, there really isn't a formula to know when like when to end. Yeah. Right? Because there's always another sentence you could add or something. But at some point you just kinda know. Yeah. Like, okay, That's the just story enough. has ended. Yeah. So we have a uh, 
comment from one of the viewers that says, where do you get the inspiration for your drinks? Mm -hmm. um, I think it depends on the moment and the time and the placement and like what you're doing it for, you know. Um, I feel like as far as this, people want something fun, something they haven't seen before, some mm -hmm. light, creative, you know, something they could walk around and be like, oh, hey, yeah. you know, <laughs> look what I got, you know, to pair with the cakes and uh, pizza and whatnot. So, yes, that's what my inspiration was for, for this event, you know, something fun and funky. Mm -hmm. So what would you pair this with? Pizza uh, or cake or... Definitely the cake, cake yeah. the cake. for sure. Okay. Um, or even oyster. I feel like it'd yeah, be really oysters. good with like fresh, yeah. like fish and oysters. Yeah. Oh, because mm -hmm. their oysters, salty bottom is returning. Yeah, salty yeah. Bottom oh, their their oysters are. They're so good. Probably just a cocktail you can like pair with multiple things throughout the day. So mm -hmm. it's light. It's you fun. Know, it's just some light. Day. Yeah, for sure. The weather's gonna be great, which is oh, it's gonna be so it's good. gonna be nice. I think the temperature is. It's gonna be in the eighties. In eighties, so not 80s. too not not too unbearable. You know, and there's, I mean, there's a VIP tent that you can do the tent. We have it indoors too. We have air conditioning. Indoors, air conditioned, yeah. exactly. You know, so you can you can go in and out. It's kind of like the beach. You can cool off. Yeah, exactly. And then go out and get warm, exactly. and then go inside and cool off, <laughs> and then get a drink, yeah. a cocktail, and cool off. The exactly. outdoor tent will be fun though. That's yeah, so yeah. that's, 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 that's going to be the place. Yeah. The place to be. That's yes, going to be the place to be. That's going to be the place to be. So thank you to Carolina Furtado. Great question. Uh, thanks for uh, for chatting. That uh, Rosalia de Rosalia Cordaro watching the show this morning. Thank you for uh, for joining Hello, us. Rosalia. Like to the show. So I mean, this is going to be just so fantastic. And like you said, so remind us again. So Blue Ridge Area Food Bank is is basically where the support going. Remind us again. What's the impact of like even so? If you get one ticket, one general mission ticket provides sixty four meals. Wow. One VIP ticket provides 114 meals. Wow. So, yeah. And you get to have a impact. blast. <laughs> yeah, while doing it. It's a win-win. You know, you feel good and, and then you go have fun. Exactly. And I think there's a certain joy to that you'll know that everyone else there, right, has contributed just like you. Yeah. So you're, you're there and talking and meeting new people, making new friends with people who kind of share like, yeah, I wanted to do this to support a, to support the food bank, and two, to have a great time. Yeah. At, at Castle Hill, enjoying this, the beauty. It really, I think Castle Hill is a place that really encapsulates all that's beautiful about Charlottesville, right? The landscape, the it's people, the, just the, the craft. Really, I think we have a great craft industry here. Mm -hmm. in, so, in so many areas, like you said, beer, wine. And this is going to highlight all that. Honey, well, I sure. mean, so many yeah. different areas. Cocktails. Indeed. I mean, I think there's a great atmosphere here that people, I think there's great people like yourself that really kind of take pride in saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be creative and interesting and, like you said, funky with, with my cocktails. I'm yeah. not just going to, all right, here I'm going to churn out the basics. Like, yeah. there's always, there's an appreciation for that here, I think. Indeed. That I have found. I was like, you said the word, like, when you said community, I was like, I feel like that's also why immediately I was like, Madario is perfect for this experience. Because for me, he really is the community bartender. <laughs> you know, when I talk about Madero, or Madero, Bebedero now, um, people are like, oh my God, there's this one guy behind the bar, like, spins, <laughs> and like, uh, uh, he's so cool. I think his name's like, meh, meh. And I'm like, oh my gosh, Madario, you know, so... And when I first moved here, the closest like restaurant to me was where he worked at. So that was my sense of oh. the end of the day mm -hmm. and a bit of community. And I was like, this is a community mm -hmm. event. Everyone knows your name in the community. He's up for Seville's best bartender right now. So definitely vote for oh, him. Also best oh, yes. um, yes. Go vote. But uh, yeah, so I was like, perfect. So, like community man, community event. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. It's perfect. Yeah. That's what you want. Yeah. That's what you want. And now remind us also, when it oh, when does the door like... Open. So if you're a v VIP ticket holder, it's 11 a.m. For a general okay. mission, it's 12 p.m. and it goes until 6 p.m. Okay, just so everyone has a good idea, like you can, and if you're a VIP, you can start partying earlier. Yeah, <laughs> exa exactly, uh, uh, exactly. Uh, uh, and there's there a schedule start. for VIP as well. Right. You'll get a festival. map. Everyone gets a festival map. You get your own glass, t branded tasting glass when you arrive. Oh, nice. Obviously, those tastings are involved in your ticket. You get access to the live music and all the good things there. But um, yeah, the VIP has a few schedule things in uh, in Marigold, so, because they, food safety, so grazing table from 11 to 2, and then mm -hmm. their tuna tartar tastings from 3 to 5. Oh. The rest of the experiences will continue up there, so. Wonderful. I mean, yeah. so many things to do. It's almost like, 
I'd say overwhelming if it weren't for the fact that you there's enough time. We to want to do make a all. ticket worth it. Exactly. You know? so. Like it's like it's so much you're like, wow, did I really fit all in? But then you're like, yeah. It's well, so nice it, that I love that you have it scheduled such that like it's very organized and that every, so nobody has to feel overwhelmed. There's so there's many plenty of time to do these things, but it's also done in a very safe way and like you can it's organized so like you know the tune is tasting gonna be three to five, you're not gonna look at your watch and miss it. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's just the sign that like you 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 put something you very curated very meticulously yeah. to taken care of something that's uh that that i mean i will say also i mean for the vip for marigold um i mean they're just next level for us luckily yeah. i mean let's be real john george is a three michelin star chef you know yeah. i mean no that's this top restaurant. notch i mean i was so excited they were kind yeah. of like one of my dream collaborators for this event because I don't really see them yet to working with the community. They're kind of still in there. They Growing maybe do it privately or whatever, but I haven't seen them kind of out and about and doing things. So I was like, please, yeah. please come it's, do yeah, this. Yeah, it's so, so awesome. Having heard so much I'm about it to so see them there. I'm so excited that they're with us. And uh, I also think this is a great chance for like the average person to start being more exposed to the Michelin yeah, what's star out food. There, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's out there and realizing that like it's not – you know, we always you always hear about like the the way the the food is, or like it. It seems like it's another world that's out of reach, and it's it's not really. It's yeah. it's something that you can get and relate to. And if you really love food, it's 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 a great way to start being exposed to Absolutely. that kind of level of of eating. To realize, I don't even know. I mean, Alex, you probably well, didn't even know flavors. that we had a marigold. Uh, to be honest, not I, until I told you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you told me. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we like we didn't, and and it's not something you think of. You wouldn't think that in Charlottesville you'd have a satellite for a three Michelin star. I consider it traveling in your area when you right. try yes. like new places or let's say a different kind of cuisine. It doesn't mm-hmm. necessarily have to be upscale. I'm like, let's travel in our area. Yeah, you know, let's try so. something new. Yeah. Try something different. Yeah, and see what Charles Foss or Opera offer. Yeah, not- Opera. It's coming well, back. Come on, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've got on my mind. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Bill McChesney, thanks for uh, joining us, liking the show this morning. Man, you guys are bringing in, you always bring in the people. You always oh, bring in the, the great <laughs> audience. The great audience. You'll be, so, the easiest way, I think, to get tickets would be to win the giveaway, but only one person <laughs> gets to do that. So, for everyone who doesn't win the giveaway at the end of today's show, where's the right place to go to get tickets, learn more? 231fest.com. 231fest.com. The easiest thing. Very that is easy. So easy. Um, and you can just click on tickets. You can read all about it. You can read about some of our vendors. You can learn more about the event. But yeah, you can buy buy your tickets. And we do have designated driver add-ons. Definitely drinking responsibly. Something we want to push. And then we also have kids uh, tickets as well that are add-ons. And the kids experience is awesome. Face painting, flower crown making. We have the touch truck, of course. We have apple painting. And then we have Aisling Flower Farm providing sunflower potting classes with like a story time as well. Um, so lots of things for the kids. Kids to have it. I mean, I can't think of anyone, just especially like getting outside for your kids is so important. Yeah. And this is oh, a great essential. way to have them do that. Yeah. And just enjoy nature, see the beautiful landscape around it, and have some a lot of fun events and creative things. They can do things with their hands and learn new things. And well, definitely, I mean, I would say bring... There's no outside food or no outside alcohol, so don't bring any of that. But, um, you know, bring a blanket, bring chairs, you know, with the live music. Because yeah. after you do your tastings, you might want to grab a bottle, watch live music, have your kids run around. I mean, the whole property sits on 650 acres right around the There's barn. I think you have space. about 20 acres. Inside the barn's 10,000 square feet. You have a lot of space, so get comfortable. Bring your blanket, bring your chairs, you know. And I'm going to say it's also great, and I know this is a more serious topic, but it's also great when children are exposed to adults... Uh, having a positive relationship with alcohol where they see how to do it properly and to see them having fun pairing it with food starting to learn like about you know quality food and quality and lo- supporting local businesses like that's that's really important for your children because like children learn by observing their parents and like if you're out there and you're showing how to appreciate cider and cocktails and like a, a, a really well done and and doing it responsibly like that's the best thing that they can learn. And so it's really great that they have their events, but they're also exposed, like, this is a cidery. It's, it's a place of alcohol, but it's not, like, uh, it's not a hush-hush, terrible thing. It's a wonderful thing when you, when you do it right, which is yeah. what, I mean, you, all, you guys always do it Yeah, right. we're not, not, not going to be at a club, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's not. It's, not. It's, 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 it's perfect. Yeah, it's, one, it's great. It's, it's going to be awesome. And I, oh, actually, uh, it looks like 
Eva Rivera says, just bought two VIP tickets. Woo! So excited. Uh, <laughs> so you, you, someone just bought two VIP tickets. Great job, Eva. Well, Eva just also uh, entered for the giveaway. Um, she's the last entry. Well, maybe she can get two more. So you yeah, could, Eva, if you win, you, you, you can, can bring some friends. You yeah. can bring some friends. Yeah, <laughs> you exactly. Bring some friends. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So, man, this has been just so fantastic. Um, just so excited. So, again, this Saturday, June 10th, from 12 to 6 for general admission, 11 to 6 for VIP, 231, the numbers, 231fest.com yep. is the place to go. Josephine, Medario, thanks so much for Thank coming on. So Thank you so for much for having us. us. Hopefully so we much. see you guys all at the festival. I know you yeah. guys have a family matter to attend to, which I would say boo, but it's beautiful what you guys are doing. So, yeah. um, it, but it killed us. I know. When uh, MJ told us the, the date, date of the yeah. festival. But listen. No. We cried inside. We try to get better every year, so next year is going to be even exactly. better. So. Next year, I'm just going to like... Since uh, my marriage is, I got married already, and there's no other big things, I'm gonna be like, I'm making no plans all of May and June. I already have the date for next year, so I'll slip it it to you. I'll slip it to you. Yeah. That thing in advance. We have one last quick question before you go, Josephine. Uh, Ricardo Duran asked, "Sorry if I missed it, but there will be, will there be a bouncy house for kids? No bouncy house. But there are going to be a ton of other. But there's going to be a ton of other things for for the kids. Again, uh, face painting, flower crown making, a sunflower potting class, apple painting. Um, and we have a concrete uh, rotating touch truck which is really fun um, I didn't even know that was a thing for kids but then they were like we do it all the time for kids so I was like let's go let's do it let's um, do it but yeah so lots of things for kids it's gonna be awesome yeah. it's gonna be awesome thanks so much for joining us Philip. of course Thank you guys. All right, so we're going to do a little swap here. Okay, this is not the last you've seen of Josephine. Yeah, Josephine but, will uh, return. We're going to, uh, Josephine and Medaria are going to swap out as we go to our second fantastic set of guests here. Also, while, they do this, while we're doing way that, to, uh, did you, like, oh, I don't it's know. fantastic. This cocktail oh, this is amazing. This cocktail is amazing. But I'm going to read out, just so that everyone realizes, like, the full list of VIP that you get at Castle Hill Cider is a festival swag bag value at $200 plus. You can bring your own swag, but the bag's got it too. Outdoor VIP tent that we heard about, a cocktail show from Medario, air-conditioned loft lounge, curated experience by Marigold, as we heard, private bathroom and sweeping property views, grazing table sponsored by Kroger, a soft seating area near the festival sa- stage. So that means that you're right up there with the music. So it's, Isn't that it's great? great? It's yeah. going to be great. It's speaking be great. of music. Speaking of music and great music. <laughs> yeah, amazing music. We are super excited to welcome to the show uh, Caroline Wara, the artistic director, and Brian Damaris, conductor for Charlottesville Opera. Caroline, Brian, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Good hey. to be here. Excited to be here. So excited, so excited to have, have you, you back, both, Caroline. You yeah. both here. And so for those audience members who, who maybe haven't met you yet on our show, Tell us a little a bit about yourselves and how you first got connected to, to Charlottesville Opera. Well, I was, uh, I've was i always heard of um, Ashlawn Festival Opera, mm-hmm. which this, this company used to be Ashlawn Opera, and, um, and then it became Charlottesville Opera. And there's 46 years. This is our 46th season. So um, I've always been um, in love with this opera company. Um, they've always done one musical, one um, opera, so it's just mm-hmm. such a, a great variety of music that this mm-hmm. company's always done. So I was fortunate to begin here in 2021, right after the pandemic, and uh, we were able to be one of the very first arts organizations to actually do a live show right mm-hmm. after the pandemic. Outside, outside of the, of the yes. Chief Pavilion, so that worked out great. So last summer, we were actually able to have a, pretty much of a normal season again, back into the Paramount Theater, and so this is my third season here, and That's awesome. um, really, I, I love this community. I actually live in Connecticut, uh, so I, I work there remotely throughout the year, and then I get and to be here during the summer. Come down. We're wow. always, we always love when you come down. Oh, yeah. Come Thank visit you. us here. <laughs> and it also means it's opera season. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Brian, how about yourself? So I was here 18 years ago conducting outdoors at Ashland Highland mm-hmm. uh, under the trees with the, with the bugs and yeah. snakes and skunks and peacocks. <laughs> and um, It was an adventure for artists for sure, so it's really great to be back here 18 years later and conducting indoors at the Paramount. When I was here, it was my first professional conducting job, wow. actually, and um, I was noticing just last night on, on my own Facebook feed just how many artists got their start at this company mm-hmm. outdoors, and it's still the case today, so many yep. uh, emerging artists getting started here. But I was actually here when the Paramount and the Jefferson were both being renovated. And the company realized that it had outgrown the outdoor space. 
and was looking for an indoor space. And I was here when the board and everyone was visiting both spaces. So the last I saw both theaters, they were completely gutted wow. and hadn't opened yet. So now you'd have to see the... the yeah. Have you have, you've been able to practice? Well, I went style? into the Paramount yesterday. This is really exciting. What a it's, beautiful space. It's a beautiful become. spot. Yeah. That's, that's going to be... And just a spot very suited to operate. It feels when you walk in, there's like, oh my goodness, this is... It's, it's like going into somewhat of an opera house. It has that kind of feel and, and, and sensation for it. So I think it's going to be fantastic. Absolutely. A great atmosphere. <laughs> so tell us, I'm, I'm, I'm very curious and, um, to know a little bit. Is our two, the two big performances this year, we got Guys and Dolls on June 23rd, 24th, and 25th. And then, of course, we got Tusca by Puccini on um, July 14th and 16th. Great to ever design the Tusca thing with the little... Uh, Bloody Heart and the Sword, that was a, a nice <laughs> brilliant. touch that yeah. gives you a little bit of idea brilliant. of yeah. what's involved, Tosca, <laughs> intrigue and excitement and so forth. But I'm curious, because each year, of course, there's that mix of the musical and, and the opera, the more tr classic traditional opera. What kind of drew everyone, or what are your feelings on, on Guys and Dolls? What, 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 what excites you about it? What, what kind of draws you to it? Well, you know, um, one of our first events last summer, uh, we were kind of talking to each other about different, different shows that people maybe really love or haven't mm -hmm. seen. And um, actually, both of these two choices, Guys and Dolls and Tosca, came up as ones that the company has never done. And so we thought, what a great way mm -hmm. to start bringing some of these things. And, mm -hmm. and um, the, the company has grown so much. They are two big shows that maybe hadn't been possible in the past. Um, Guys and Dolls obviously has lots of dancing. And now, uh, you know, we've got such a wonderful relationship with Charlottesville Ballet. Mm -hmm. So we've got mm -hmm. some, um, Casey Turner is our amazing choreographer. So, you know, she's really upped our game as far as getting some real dancers in town. And she so awesome. works with all of our emerging artists so that they look like professional dancers as well. Um, and then Tosca also has you know, such a huge chorus and the mm -hmm. fact that we are also so lucky to have um, a, a, a beautiful space to be able to do that mm -hmm. in. And um, people have always been afraid of of, of doing something with such a such a big um, chorus, such a big uh, important jump at the end of the yep. show, and uh, but now we feel that we are uh, able to do that now, which as well. is so exciting and so amazing to, to to see something of the the reputation as Tosca right here in Charlottesville with the, with the amazing artists that you have at Charlottesville Opera. So that's just yes. thrilling, yes. thrilling. <laughs> Brian, how about yourself when you sort of approach something like? Like the dolls and guys and dolls. What's your what's your feeling? What what excites you about it? Oh, for guys and well, you know, I conduct and play. I'm a pianist as well and a teacher, and I work on musical theater and opera. I love both equally. Um, what's interesting you're doing here is a 1950s musical, mm -hmm. guys and dolls, all these 1950s uh, pop songs, and yeah. it's really um, just like Tosca. Like in, when I conduct, you kind of have to step back in time and hear mm -hmm. the musical world of that mm -hmm. era. And guys and dolls is no different because it's been a long time since 1950s. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> but I, I love the music. The start of the overture of Guys and Dolls is just sort of the same thrills as opening chords, Scarpia mm -hmm. chords of Tosca, and uh, what the orchestra brings to both of those shows is really fabulous. And I love doing musicals with opera companies where we have the full orchestra. It's just mm -hmm. incredible. Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's just and just the the talent that then you're able to bring to the musicals, you know, because I mean. I like the old movie, but you know, I like I keep that I've said every time Marlon Brando probably has no business singing Luck Billy, that was such a great song. So I'm looking forward to having it sung by like talented singers. Exactly. Who one can of my really, exactly yeah. one of my favorite things actually is when opera companies do musicals, just like you're saying, because the quality of the voices I mean, I, I you know, I obviously the movie's great. Yeah. <laughs> But to, um, you know, to have these, we have four professionals, big time professionals coming in uh, to do these main four lead roles and they sing and act so beautifully. Plus all of the incredible voices you were mentioning, the concert, you know, to mm -hmm. Susan Knight and I. So you can just imagine all of those voices yes. plus community voices that are all joining together, you know, so you can really do a big show like this up really right. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Do you have a favorite moment? So uh, one of the things we were talking about with Leanne last time was like the, the story elements of, of especially both. Do you have a favorite moment that's not maybe a lot, not like a, a highlight that you see on the real like Vista, We were talking about how Vista de la Arte, everyone's always waiting for that moment. 
Is there a favorite moment in Guys and Dolls and Tosca that you feel like is underappreciated that you can't wait to to see here in Charlottesville? Hmm. Do you have thoughts? You no, know, in um, well, the dance music in Guys and Dolls, it, the dance tells a story, mm. and that's what's fabulous about that show. We don't stop the plot for the dances, and it's interesting. We do, we, you know, we, we did West Side Story up at the. <laughs> 18 years ago up on the lawn, <laughs> we had to cut a lot of the dance music and it was really difficult because a dan dance tells a story in a yeah. musical. And um, to be indoors now and to have dancers not have to cut all of that, it's just, it's really incredible. And in Tosca, I don't I think what's underappreciated is the whole second act for The Soprano, <laughs> which is un really for some of the hardest singing that there is. And it just gets more and more emotionally and physically intense. And uh, they make it look so easy. And Caroline, I know you've sung this role, and I know you know how it goes, because uh, it's so thickly orchestrated. And you got to move that thing. And mm -hmm. I think the audience is so wrapped up in the story and the drama there that they don't realize really what the singers are going through to make it happen today, like yeah. like Olympian athletes. <laughs> exactly. And I think, you know, sometimes people think that they are either more of a musical theater fan or an opera fan and, and maybe not both. But um, I think the thing that's great is, you know, guys and dolls, you're going to come in and you're going to be, you know, mm -hmm. tap it along and snap it along um, and hearing tunes that you probably know. Um, with Tosca, I think you're going to be so excited to be immersed in yes. a real just drama-filled mm -hmm. opera, you know, and how fun it is to go to a beautiful theater like the yeah. Paramount mm -hmm. and to just feel that huge orchestra and these huge yeah. voices, you know, I think it's just an experience to, that everyone is going to really want to mm -hmm. be part of. Oh, absolutely. And the beauty of Tust is that it's one of those ones, it's one of Puccini's more like grand stale ones. Because he has like, he has very famous ones like La Boheme that are more you know, it, maybe intimate is the right word, like you're in a, a, a smaller story. And, but then you'd have told us that you are in a big story with a big, powerful plot, and you are going to be completely immersed in this thing. You're going to, and he makes you feel it exactly. in the music. Like he reinforces, like, this is, this is a strong story and, you're, and an emotional and a turbulent exactly. uh, story. So, as a conductor, then, and in, in, in that, and that second act that we're talking about, right? This 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 tense moment. Where where what is your role in in like with balancing the orchestra and the soloist? Because this this stuff fascinates me endlessly. So I just would love to be able to hear your insight. Oh, yeah. thought. you know, there's so much tradition in opera that, and there's a lot in that's expected or demanded in the music that's actually not written. So the first part of it is making sure the orchestra knows kind of when to move, when to pull back. Mm -hmm. that, that's the first thing. But then as soon as the singers are there, it's really just being with them and supporting them. Um, Caroline, the mm -hmm. other day, we were talking about how you meet this new team when you come into town, you have to get the telepathy going. Mm -hmm. And it's a real thing when you're collaborating like that, mm -hmm. that, to develop that telepathy, that we all know what each other is thinking and feeling without speaking it because we're mm -hmm. just making the music. But uh, you know, the jump at the end of Tosca is so thrilling, but if the conductor isn't really thinking about, okay, how's she feeling tonight? Is she feeling safe? Is that, mm -hmm. you know, to be mindful of that so that you can be there and support the singer through that moment. Tosca is filled of all of that because it has the love and the jealousy and the violence and the rage and all of it there. And the conductor kind of has to be, you know, a little bit flight control, but also <laughs> when, when they can tell the singers are ready to really go mm -hmm. there, the conductor can as well. So. Awesome. Oh, that's how yeah. to be excited, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and to some of that, does some of that kind of happen you can't plan for it. Like it kind of happens as you're doing the live performance. You're like, okay, this this is really going to take off right now, and I need yeah. to kind of go with that. Exactly, and we're so lucky to have Brian here because he has worked with singers for so many years. Mm -hmm. You know, to have a, an or, you know, he's so knowledgeable with the orchestra, but that his, his heart is with those singers too. Yeah. <laughs> and and we we can tell that as um, mm -hmm. on stage, you know, because there are times that you might look at the orchestra at the conductor, and your eyes are bugging out of your head, and he knows what that means. <laughs> yes. He knows. Okay, you need to push that a little bit, or I need to, you know. Or the funny thing is too, in live, uh, at, at the moment, you might forget a word, and the and the, and the maestro might. Word it, I mean, mouth it to you, and uh, uh, uh. you know it's just great to have that yeah. relationship right there with that pit in front of you and the moisture in front of you. So <laughs> that has to be fantastic. Yeah, it must, must be, be fun to mouth in Italian, right? <laughs> uh, I, I remember one uh, dress rehearsal of Rigoletto, and the 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 main the lead baritone Rigoletto decided he couldn't sing that night, and I got to sing the whole thing while I conducted through it, and. <gasps> 
a, it's a valuable lesson, but it, it's oh. thrilling, and it's, I'm not a singer. Wow. But it's the only experience I really had doing all of it together, and, and I wish I could do it more, but I'm really glad the singers stay healthy and <laughs> perform, and no one has to listen to me. <laughs> you don't want to make a habit of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's that's amazing. You just do the the what was his name, Alan, that actor that just did Macbeth, all just to him alone in a room, just yeah, that one one man performance. Oh, that yeah, that would be much. Idea, yeah, it's too much. That, yeah. that would be a little much. So, what what are some of the great? I know you always bring in such amazing talent. What are some of the great stars we can be? looking forward to in, in these in both these performances. Right. Well, so, um, you know, right when we were trying to think about uh, which shows we wanted to do this year, we came up with Guys and Dolls. The very first guy that came to my mind was Keith Fares. And he is about as suave as it gets. And so he is our Sky Masterson. Uh, and yep. it was so fun on Monday to hear the sing-through. And, you know, he just fits right into it. So, of course, he's a, you know, he's a, a very famous opera singer. But um, that trained voice... You know, these trained voices that we get are able to do both. And so these are kind of the legit musical theater mm, pieces mm-hmm. that really call for an operatic voice. Um, so he's about as smooth as it gets. Mm-hmm. I'm really excited about him. And um, paired with him is Elise Qualiata. And she's a very famous mezzo. They've worked together, actually, many, many times. So it's nice that they've worked together so much um, over the years. So they have a really nice chemistry already. Nice. Um, and the very, very, very famous Chauncey Packer is here as Nathan <laughs> Detroit. So he is, you know, he is at the Met right now doing all kinds of things this season so it's oh, quite awful. cool this big metropolitan opera star <laughs> and then he's here as the cool nathan detroit i know yeah. it's really great <laughs> and he's paired with cree caracol and she was also the one like right away when i thought the perfect adelaide is cree and it's kind of amazing because all four of these very famous opera singers have never done these roles before wow. and so they're having a blast just you know getting to getting to play these characters yeah. um so so i'm thrilled about about those those oh, four right away awesome. for guys and dolls. That's gonna be awesome. Yeah, awesome. And shout <laughs> out, thank you, Don Whitaker, for watching. Oh, Don Whitaker, yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks mm-hmm. for joining us this morning. Always, always fun to have you. Can uh, I ask an inside question about Tosca? Yes. Without giving away the ending, I know there's. I from what I read, there was always the question of whether Mario knows at the end what's gonna happen. Oh. Are Are you playing it this year <laughs> that he knows, or are you, are you, are, are, does he not know, or is that like the performer is gonna decide? You know, I mean, you might have, maybe have an answer to this, but, you know, we, right now, we are still rehearsing Guys and Dolls. We haven't actually started. We have, our Tosca cast has not come in yet. Oh, okay, interesting. So it'll be They're probably, probably still thinking it. yeah, over. it'll yeah. be probably a really interesting thing yeah. with our director, um, who will be, you know, our, our Tosca cast uh, is, is also quite amazing. Marsha Thompson is, oh. is going to be our um, Tosca. Um, Adam Deagle is our Cavaradosi, and Todd Thomas is our uh, Scarpia. Um, mm. They have done these roles many many times so I bet you that they already have maybe an interpretation that they have done in the past Um, but yet you know that's the exciting thing when you bring people together to do these shows that have really never done these shows before together I think a lot of people think that maybe singers go and do the same role all across the country all the time but they're going from one show to a different show to a different show Mm -hmm. a different director a different production a different conductor and so each time you are Making new choices. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, Tosca is written as it is, but there are little, little interesting choices that one can make. Uh, you know, with, exactly. with the new dynamics of the new cast mm-hmm. that you're part of. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's kind of new every time. That combination of singers with with the, the conductor, right, and with everyone else, the orchestra. Brings out something new each each time mm-hmm. that that you go. Probably even each time you go see it. Exactly. You know, even yeah. even each of these performances. How someone's feeling that day, how the what the what the weather is like, mm-hmm. might you know if it's moody weather, you might get a little a little more you know dramatic in it. There's just yes. no telling what happens day to day. Yeah, and that's live theater, yeah. you know, because as, as a singer, we are up there, and and maybe one day I look at the the tenor and I was like, oh, you know, maybe we found something new, yeah. you know, or you know the pro- the rehearsal process is always the favorite part mm-hmm. for singers right. because you can keep on experimenting, experimenting yeah. with things, but certainly at that moment too you just never know yeah you know, just, that's the beauty of it I think for anyone out there who has maybe seen a musical on TV or if you've seen if maybe if you've been to the Paramount to see one of those Met things where they do the recording of it right there is something to live music that you really I would really encourage you to take the next step exactly. and, and come to either Guys and Dolls in, on June 23rd 24th 25th 
or Dosi uh, Tosta, or both, or Dosi Tosta on July 14th and 16th, because there really is something very different about a live performance when you're there and you're feeling it and you're feeling the energy of the singers, the energy of the orchestra, the energy of the conductor. It's going to be really spectacular. Exactly. I was properly scolded by Leanne who said, don't reveal the secrets. Hey. So <laughs> she doesn't want she doesn't want me asking those questions, so I won't. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that people, well, but it's, yeah. it's it's one of those like interpretation things that like you get yeah. to get curious about because like you can play because of the fact that it's not written in the score. Like you any can play act, any you can change singer it up. can just make the or a director yeah. can make those decisions. So it's really interesting because the story is completely different based on something that that's not written there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, people, people can have, have a whole new interpretation each and every single time. Yes. And people that have seen these shows a million times are certainly looking forward to seeing it again. But mm -hmm. it's also so exciting for people that have never seen these shows. So it's not that, you know, you're, you're not going to know what's going on. You're going to be completely in the story. You know, it's kind of like watching your favorite movie over and over and over and over, or watching a movie at the very first time you've ever seen it, and you're kind of at the edge of your seat. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so, you know, nothing's given away. And <laughs> oh, exactly. I'm still have to go watch it, because there's a you lot do. that goes on. There's a lot <laughs> that goes on. And Leanne probably remembers this. There is also a Fest third opportunity, really, to uh, I would encourage this, the festival on on July 1st at the Teen Pavilion. So you've got, I mean, activities. Which is a free York's. event. That's a free event. It's a free, well, event. The free concert by, uh, conducted by Michael Sloan as well, um, who's been on. So a great event to really kind of begin to get you, maybe your kids, immersed in just the world of music and opera and, and you know, in a, in a fun and active way. So you can kind of, you can do all three. You can get yourself really immersed in that because it's going to be a great lead in, I think, to to the opera that's that's going to appear, you know, in July. Exactly. And we also have um, two other free events, the Kids Fest. So the Wednesday before each of the productions, uh, between 1.30 and 3.30, um, any kids activity groups, camps, and things like that can come and experience these shows wow. for our final dress rehearsal. Awesome. And so... You know, we hope that lots of uh, organizations want to sign up for that. They're very invited to sign up for that, and that's a great opportunity for kids to maybe either be in the theater for the first time, um, or um, you know, then invite their parents to come back for the for the yeah. performances the next week. Um, so that's certainly free and, and open for kids. And and then this uh, festival, arts festival, is um, there is we're pairing up also with the Charlottesville Ballet, so they'll be dancing. Mm, uh, nice. we're, we're with the Oratorio Society, with Michael Salon conducting, um, and all of these amazing uh, emerging artists. So you had mentioned there's, there were 350 people that auditioned, and we chose the top 15 in the whole entire world, right? <laughs> so you're going to hear these Quality. voices um, up close. So you can just walk up to the Tink Pavilion. There's all these wonderful um, tents that are available, kids face painting, um, all kinds of things from five to Seven, and then this great concert will start at 7 o'clock. So to hear blessed. opera singers yeah. up close singing opera things, also singing musical things, theater things, yeah. um, watching dancing, hearing orchestra, oratorios. It's a great mm. yeah. free it's, event. Yeah, July Absolutely. 1st. Don't forget it. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah it's going to be it's going to be a blast. It's going to be a blast. Ah, so before we let you go, where where can people find out more information? Get get some tickets. Most importantly, if, if you don't win, if you don't win the giveaway, we don't win the giveaway. Yes. Where can we get tickets? Get some tickets somehow. Well, right now we have a great little promo going on for Father's Day. So if you buy two tickets or more, starting right now through this Sunday, um, you will get five dollars off every ticket that you buy. So that promo oh. is going on right now. That's awesome. Um, so you can go to the Paramount Theater uh, website to get tickets to purchase tickets, but you can also always go to the charlottesvilleopera.org uh, to find out more information about all these different concerts that are happening. Um, we have master classes that are going on, obviously these two big um, other events that are happening. So uh, charlottesvilleopera.org or the Paramount Theater. Or the Paramount Theater. Mm -hmm. So so many ways. Oh, yeah. So many ways uh, to get connected and, and find out more. And so many events. And some of the free events, I think you can do the same thing, charlottesvilleopera.org. You can go and sign up and, exactly. and get more information for the, for the kids. Uh, fast. And so Leanne reminded us that rents, R-E-N-T-S, is the code for the discount, so make sure you put in the promo code R-E-N-T-S for 
parents, I guess. Right, <laughs> parents. <laughs> yep, parents. That's oh, a good one, yeah. Yes. I like yeah. it. Caroline, Brian, it's been so fantastic having you on. Thanks so much for joining us this Thank morning. You. Thank it's you. It's been fantastic. Yeah. So we're so going to hold on to Caroline. Interesting, we're going to hold on to Caroline. Brian is going right. to swap, swap with Josephine here because we, we got are, are ready we got at bolt. long last. It's been a number of weeks. I mean, all I know is it started while I was uh, out on my honeymoon. I come back and like he says, Nick's like, there's a giveaway I'm doing. I'm like, what? Right? And then, and and then just, he said, you can't enter. And I said, ah, oh, that's Yeah, no, that's we're not allowed to enter. Only the herpes were not allowed. Everyone else. Everyone else was allowed to enter. And here we go. To, uh, we'll we'll wait enter. until so, we'll see when Josephine's on screen. Judah will give us the, Judah's okay. Give us, oh, Josephine's Judah's Judah's thumbs up. So we are so, ready to do the giveaway. the giveaway drawing. So ladies. Should I go in? All right. I'll go hold. For it. <laughs> That's how you know I'm not cheating. You got the drum roll, please. How many names do I pull? One? Just one. Just one. Just, Just one. one. One person's going to win it all. She's mixing it very well. Yeah. No, look, she's really. Good say, she's I, good. She's really uh, giving the drum. I'm committed. I'm committed. I know. Who do we got here? At Mona underscore Lisa. Underscore, uh, that's an awesome. Oh, Mona name. Lisa. Okay, Mona Lisa. Um, Mona Lisa, you just won. Congratulations. Two. You. Well, you ate. Well, hold on. Let me that's get the an full. Awesome Instagram. That is the. <laughs> that is a, I had a lot of fun writing that down. Um, so you just won two VIP tickets to Castle Hill Cider Two Thirty One Fest. Two sixty-five dollar tickets to Charlottesville Opera's Guys and Dolls. Uh, and and because of the the way the promo works, you can go to any of the three performances. A um, hundred dollar gift card to a participating downtown mall business as uh, courtesy Friends of Seville. Uh, $50 gift card to Guajito Seville, thanks to Matias Young Realty. $50 to Auto Seville, courtesy of Matias Young Realty. A bag of coffee and two cafes to from Taiga Pura Vida Coffee, um, from our friend Taina Fias Castro. A summer bouquet by Flower uh, Girl Seville, and two pizzas and two free drinks from Popitos Pizza. And if you need a friend to come with you, my Instagram is at Real Josefina. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of stuff. It's just a lot of stuff. <laughs> a lot of stuff. Very, so congratulations. Congratulations. Mona we will Lisa. reach out. I think we're going to reach out oh, to her. Oh, I will reach out to her through the Today Manana page, and we will get you all the stuff you need. Um, but uh, awesome. congratulations. Oh. And congratulations. thank you to everyone who participated. Yeah. Thanks for the amazing. Thanks, Charles Lava and uh, Tassel Hill for the great, uh, <laughs> the great top, the, our two top things there for the, for the giveaway. Yeah, really those are amazing. It. Those it's are amazing. amazing. It's amazing. Ah, well, this this has been so fantastic. So, so thanks so much, so much for for being with us today. Thanks to everyone who came. It's thanks to everyone who watched the show today. It was just all your comments, your questions. They're fantastic. We really love them. And just uh, yeah, be sure to check out this weekend, June tenth, two thirty one Fest Castle Hill Cider. June twenty third, twenty fourth, twenty fifth, the Dyers and Dolls. July first is the festival at Ting Pavilion, and July fourteenth and sixteenth is Tosca. So be sure to check all of those things out, charlottesvilleopera.org, castlehillsider.com, 231fest.com as well. So next week's going to be fantastic as well. We're going to have Valerie Hill, uh, local, uh, structural local, engineer. local business, structural engineer, as well as Emily Harpster from Sugar Bear Seville is going to be joining us. Always love being here. Really appreciate it. This is great. Well, well done. Well when, done. When the opera and Castle are on, Xavier Nick gets is, the boot. And oh, I, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, it. Schedule, so yeah I, I schedule. I looked at because we have like a firm schedule thing. So I'm looking at it. I'm like, I see Nick has placed himself on. I don't even need to like then check the desk. There's some, like, some combination of Charlottesville everything. Opera and or, and or Castle of Sutter are on if Nick has put himself <laughs> on the that. show schedule. I love that. So it's, it's fantastic. Thanks to everyone who watched today. Thanks to Judah behind the camera. I know we did a lot of switching on him today, but he makes us all Thank look you, good. Judah. So he's a master of that. Um, of course, thanks to Merchant Financial Services for presenting. Thank you to our amazing partners, Charlotte's Philopera, Castle Cider, Matias Yon Realty, Credit Serious Insurance, Forward Adelante. Thank you, our audience, for joining us. Thank you, Nick, for co-hosting with me today. We look forward to seeing you all next week. But until that time, as we say, hasta mañana. All right, great show. That was, was a, a guys. That was a blast. I'm never going to get up.